In this video, we're going to take a look at an example where we compute the work done in moving an object. Now, in our last video, we went through the, the theory of how to compute this work. And so the idea is, is if a force uh, varies over a distance, then we can get the total work done by doing a definite integral over that distance uh, where we integrate the, the force function that's constantly changing. Now, we didn't really get into it at the time, but you know, what would be some, some examples of, of some reasons a force might change uh, over a given distance? Well, a great kind of classic example is something known as Hooke's Law, and that's what we're going to do in this example. Uh, imagine you had a, an object here that was attached to a spring, uh, and the spring was attached to some fixed wall or ceiling or something like that. Well, then there's a, a natural equilibrium point, right? And it doesn't require any force to keep it at that equilibrium point. But uh, as you start, um, you know, uh, applying a force to this object, as the displacement becomes greater from its natural state, it requires more force to keep it at that state. So, for instance, if you took, uh, you know, this object here and you moved it, you know, just, you know, just ever so slightly, um, it would not require a lot of force to, to move it this distance. But if you wanted to compress it this much, it would require more force. Or if you wanted to compress it uh, this much, it would require even more force. So the force changes depending on the, the displacement. So let's see if we can, first of all, write down this force as a function of the displacement, and then we'll look at a particular example to help tie it all together. So what's the force required to move an object from its resting state. Well, as I just said earlier, it depends on what the displacement is, whether you're compressing it or stretching it. We'll do stretching since our example that we're gonna do uh, deals with stretching a spring, but the same thing could be done for, for um, compressing as well. Um, if you stretch uh, this spring by a, a distance of X, well, then the force required to move that object will be proportional to that distance, meaning as that distance gets larger, the force would get larger. So we're going to express this by K times X. And this is what's known as Hooke's Law, that the force required to stretch a spring is proportional to the displacement from its resting resting state. So um, keep that in mind. We're going to need this in just a minute. And this f of x equals kx. This, this is going to be, for Hooke's Law, this is going to be what we're going to have in our formula to compute the work done to, to move an object attached to a particular spring. All right, so let me uh, hide this uh, window here. And uh, so here's our problem that we're going to try to work in this video. All right, so it says a force of 10 newtons is required to stretch a spring from its natural state of five centimeters long to a uh, length of 10 centimeters long. So five centimeters is its uh, equilibrium state, its resting state, and 10 newtons is an amount of force that's required to stretch that. Now, uh, what is 10 newtons, I guess, representative of? Well, you could think of it as representing how stiff the spring is. If it was a very stiff spring, that number 10 would be a little higher. If it was a very loose and a floppy spring that number 10 would be a little bit lower so this in some ways indicating the stiffness of the spring and the question is this how much work is done in stretching this from 10 centimeters to 15 centimeters so an additional five centimeters so that that's a great question here so we're going to remember that that formula and this is how we'll, we'll begin we have a, a lot of work to do here uh, we'll begin by taking the fact that the force required to stretch a spring, in this case 10, uh, would be equal to K times the displacement, um, the displacement that it takes from its resting state to 10 centimeters. So I'm not gonna write K times 10, I'm gonna write K times five because it's five additional centimeters from its resting state. Its resting state is already five centimeters long, to go an additional five centimeters, to stretch it five centimeters, um, would require 10 newtons of force. Now, why do we begin with this? Well, this reveals what K is. All right, now, one small thing before we go any farther. Uh, one thing that worries me a little bit is the, is the units here. The units are either typically, and this I guess this doesn't have to be the case, but typically it's either in 
foot pounds, which is not going to be what we're using because we're using centimeters and, and newtons, uh, or another common unit is newton meters. Newton meters, that's a very common unit of work. So to stay in line with that, that idea, we are already have newtons. It would be much better for us if we had meters as opposed to centimeters. So we can compute this 5 centimeters to 0 0.05 and we'll consider it as meters, right? This is centimeters and we're going to call it 0 0.05 uh, meters. Okay, so um, solve for K by dividing both sides by 0.05. I'll let you do that scratch work on, on your paper there, but I believe this would wind up being 200, 210 divided by 0.05, uh, we would get K equals 200. Now, why is that helpful? Well, you remember we had this, this function of X, this F of X equals KX. Well, we just discovered what K is, and that's going to be what's used in our uh, definite integral. Okay, so let's um, take this sheet away, make a, a new layer here. So our formula for work now will be the integral of not kx, but 200x, 200x dx. All right, now what are our, our limits of integration going to be? Well, um, our natural state was 5 centimeters. And don't write this in pen because we're going to erase this in a second. There's a, an adjustment I need to make. And um, we, we asked... Um, what would be the work required in moving this from 10 centimeters to 15 centimeters? So you might think that we'll write from 10 to 15. However, that's not exactly right because remember, we're going to try to make the final units in Newton meters, right? Newton meters, not Newton centimeters or anything like that. So let's convert 10 centimeters to 15 centimeters. Uh, convert both of those units into meters. So 10 centimeters would be uh, 0 0.1 meter to 0 0.15 meters, which is, you know, 15 centimeters. Okay, so that now we have our definite integral that's going to give us the work done in stretching our spring in a, an additional 5 centimeters. We'll do this integral. Integral of 200x would be 100x squared, 100x squared, and we'll put a bracket, right, a bracket with 0 0.1 uh, to 0 0.15, 0 0.15. Okay, so we'll plug in the top number, we'll plug in the bottom number and subtract. So I have 100, and then we'll have 0.15, 0 0.15 squared minus 100 times 0 0.1 squared. So next we would have to evaluate uh, these decimals here and multiply by 100 and whatnot. Um, 0.15 quantity squared is 0 0.0225 times 100 would give you 2.25. Um, 0.1 squared would be 0 .01, 0 0.01 uh, times 100 would be just 1. And so subtract these two quantities, and we would get 1.25. So now what, what are the units for this guy? The, um, the units would be 1.25 either Newton meters, Newton meters, or there's also a, a shortened name for Newton meters. You could also say 1.25 joules. And so that's a, a unit of work that would um, represent the amount of work required to stretch your spring. It's already stretched to 10 centimeters, but to stretch it an additional five centimeters to, to 15 centimeters. So we see calculus coming in into play here and mixing well with physics uh, to give us a, a very neat application problem.